A few years ago, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal newspaper about a major oil discovery in the Gulf of Mexico. They drilled down, did some drilling, drillings in some area where they, where, they, where they suspected there might be some big oil finds. And sure enough, they found some huge deposits of oil. And they, they named these oil, oil fields, and this particular one was named the Jack Field. And it produced a substantial amount of oil flow for a certain number of days, I think it was 30 days, that verified, based on the flow rate and the pressure, verified a large deposit of oil underneath the water. The, the oil, oil deposits exist in the Earth's crust, the outer layer of the Earth. Now most of the Earth is covered with water, so a lot of times when we're drilling for oil, we have to go uh, underwater first and then through the ocean floor to find the oil deposit. Just because they're located, oil deposits are located at various places around the Earth, and some of those places are parts, where the, parts of the Earth where the water covers the surface. This picture shows some offshore drilling platforms they build these apparatus they're gigantic helicopters can land on these things these things are, are absolutely huge and they drill down in this case they're they're sending pipe down through the water to the seabed and then they're drilling down into the ocean floor and hopefully finding oil the crude oil is pumped to the surface um, or just flows to the surface if it's under pressure down there and then the crude oil gets refined into gasoline or other petroleum products such as plastic, anything that's made out of petroleum. Uh, one of the noteworthy things in this picture is these flames that you see here and then a lot of little ones in the background. These are called flares. The process of drilling for oil often produces a lot of excess gases. This is not gasoline gases, but gases in the, senses, in the sense that it's not a liquid or solid. A lot of these excess gases that aren't used or aren't, aren't wanted are simply burned away to get rid of them. And uh, this large structure here is called a flare boom, and it simply gets the flame far away from the platform where the people are. Here's a picture of the Gulf of Mexico. I'll point out a few features. This is the coastline around here. So this body of water right here is the Gulf of Mexico. This is Texas here. Oil rich land in Texas. There are a lot of oil wells all throughout Texas and a lot in the shallow water here off the coast of Texas. Same with Louisiana. Some other states here. This is Mississippi and Alabama. This is Georgia and Atlanta, Georgia is about right here where I'm sitting right now as I record this and right about here is Charleston, South Carolina where I grew up. Some other things you see on here, this this boundary line right here, that's the border between Texas and Mexico. So Mexico is down here and if we scroll down we see the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, Yucatan Peninsula right here, and this is Cuba here not too far from Florida. And a little bit of the Bahama Islands we see right over there. Now, a lot of oil wells exist in the Gulf of Mexico, and most of them are in this shallow region. This picture is a good image. It shows the depth of the water. This is a three-dimensional image showing the ocean floor as well as the land. And the, these lighter areas here are where the water is very shallow. And then these darker areas are where the water is much, much deeper. And the shading on this image uh, makes it look that way, it gives it a, a three-dimensional appearance exactly for that reason. That's what they're trying to show. Now, the wells that were discovered in this article that I read, I'm, re I'm referring to the article that I read in the Wall Street Journal, the wells that were discovered were way out here in the deep water, which is hard to get to. Um, the, the oil is harder to get to. They have to go through uh, the water or they have to build the rig on top of the water and then go down about 7,000 feet. That's about a mile and a half to get to the ocean floor. And then they drill down through the rock about another 20,000 feet, about another four miles, and then they have found these huge oil deposits. They discovered these based on analysis of seismic data. Seismic waves are the waves that are produced by an earthquake. When there's an earthquake, 
the ground obviously shakes very violently and waves are produced. These are by waves I mean vibrations that travel through the Earth's crust. Similar to sound waves traveling through the air, these are vib vibrations traveling through the Earth's crust. And these are called seismic waves. These waves can be picked up, they can be detected by seismographs which are simply instruments designed to detect the vibrations in the Earth's crust. And geologists studying this seismic data are able to tell some things about the interior of the Earth. Some waves, some sound waves travel more effectively through other materials, or sound waves might bounce off certain layers inside the Earth, and by analyzing the seismic data they can tell some things about what's down inside the Earth without, without having to actually dig down there. Now some, some uh, engineers were analyzing some of this seismic data and they came up with a new mathematical technique for analyzing the data. And using these new mathematical techniques they pinpointed some locations where they thought oil discoveries would, would be more likely to be. And sure enough drilling in those places resulted in the discovery of the Jack Field this new oil field which they believe contains up to 15 billion that's billion with a B 15 billion barrels of oil this is a huge find that one discovery effectively doubled the oil reserves of the country that is a huge find and it is obviously significant this has scientific significance in the new techniques that they developed for analyzing the seismic data it has huge economic significance because an oil find like this increases the supply of oil and that tends to decrease the price of oil and that has an effect on the economy and on the political scene because uh, oil, big oil is a, is a huge industry and there's a lot of regulations on it by the government so there are political ramifications to this discovery as well and also obviously environmental issues drilling for oil can be messy and oil can be damaging to the environment if it's not done properly so there's environmental hazard and even if the oil is is extracted from the ground in a clean and safe way when it's converted to gasoline and burned into cars there's environmental issues uh, because of the pollution from the cars so this is obviously a tremendously significant deal finding this huge oil deposit now there's two points that I want to make from all of this the first point is that these engineers could do this they could find this oil because they understood some things about the physical world. They understood the geology, the structure of the Earth's crust, they understood the seismic waves and how they travel through the Earth, and they understood the mathematics, how to analyze the data in order to find places where they thought the oil would be likely to be present. They were able to do this because they were educated, they understood the physical world. The other point I want to make is that I was able to read this article and appreciate it and grasp its significance because I understood some things about the physical world. I don't know as much geology as these guys. I don't know enough about drilling for oil to go out and set up an oil company myself. And I probably don't know enough math to analyze the data the way that they did. But I know something about the crust of the earth and something about oil and the refining process and something about seismic waves. And I know enough about the physical world to read this article in the newspaper and understand understand it and make sense of it and appreciate the significance of what was going on. So my point is that it's good to be educated. It's a very good thing to be able to pick up a newspaper and read an article in it and make sense of the details because you know and understand the things that are being discussed in that article. Or to be able to watch the news and understand what they're talking about and understand the significance of the ideas that are being discussed because you're educated and know some things about those topics or just to be able to talk to someone, to be able to enter into conversation with someone or into debate with someone and to be educated enough to make sense of the ideas. Ideas have consequences and as we've seen from this, this little discussion the ideas surrounding the discovery of these oil fields have huge consequences in a variety of different aspects of our life and our world. These particular ideas deal mostly with the physical world, with physical science and that's exactly what this course is going to be about.